guys, this is Caesar Creates, and welcome back to my channel! I am finally back with another Planet Zoo video and in today's episode we will add the Scimitar Horned Oryx to our Elm Hill City Zoo. This animal is new to the game, it was added with a new conservation pack along with the Przewalski horse that we already added to the game and some others. This animal was very high on my wish list, so I am very happy that it was added to the game and I really wanted to add it to our zoo and also I have sort of like a personal story connected to this animal that I will share with you guys later in the video. But before I will start explaining what I've built for this beautiful antelope, let me go back for a second to our last Planet Zoo video where I've built the Przewalski horse habitat. Because I would like to thank you guys for an amazing, like mind-blowing response to this video. Right now when I am recording this voiceover, the last video has over 30,000 views, which is so much when it comes to my channel and my standards so thank you guys so much it has so many likes it has so many comments you guys really loved it so thank you thank you for that this is right now the most viewed Planet Zoo video on my channel and also almost 1000 of you joined the channel, I mean subscribed to my channel after watching that video, so thank you so much. I lately celebrated in 8,000 subscribers and right now we are almost on 9,000 so thank you guys this is really incredible I didn't expect that that you like this habitat so much I mean I loved it so <laughs> I am so glad because it was a lot of work that I did over the weekend of the early access so I am so so beyond happy that uh, you liked it so much and of course, big warm welcome to all the new people who joined the channel lately. I am beyond grateful and I am so, so happy to have you here. Okay, but let's go back to today's video because I know that so many of you guys waited for it. I got so many questions where when the new video will be out. So we are finally here. It was just, you know, nice weather finally in my country. We had a proper summer over the last days. I met a lot of friends and also I attended a music festival that took place uh, in my uh, hometown. I am very lucky because the big biggest uh, music festival in Poland always takes place in my hometown so I am always attending it uh, and this time I was also there so yeah that's why I couldn't record uh, but I am back I am back to work and you can expect many many new videos uh, in the future days Okay, but let's finally talk about the Scimitar Horned Oryx enclosure, what was the inspiration and what we are building today. Okay, so I started today's video by creating a mode. You guys know that I am a big fan of the modes. I always prefer to use something like that over a fence or a you know, cage or something like that. I think that uh, the guests get so much better view on the animals, on the habitats and so on. So uh, whenever I can, I always use the mode. Uh, this time the mode won't be with any uh, water, it will just be like a concrete mode. I will also add so much more details to it by the end of this video so if you like to see it stay tuned. This mode will be however very cool because I was finally able to do uh, something that I wanted to do for a very long time but I wasn't able to do it with the terrain tool. You are not able to be as precise sometimes as you would like with the terrain tool but right now we have those grass panels that came with the uh, conservation pack and because of it I could cheat it a bit and add those uh, grass panels like uh, in between the gas and the moats. Uh, I saw that in so many zoos. I think it looks so so beautiful and because of that you can add so much greenery, so much foliage to the habitat that isn't actually inside of the habitat, it is around it and because of that the habitat looks so 
much more like green, especially when it comes to the ungulate enclosures where you don't want to use too much of the plants. You can sort of cheat it and add the plants around and it still looks so green and so beautiful. This is what I also saw in Berlin Zoo. Uh, I am I know that I am talking a lot about this zoo, but I was so, so inspired by it. Like. Uh, we are building a city zoo here and I think it was like a staple city zoo with very cool designs, very cool theming, like very cool plants. So I will be using a lot of inspiration from the zoo here uh, in my Elm Hill city zoo for sure. So on this green part of our mode, I added a lot of plants that were added to the game with the conservation pack or the new free update. Uh, for example, this Yorkshire fork grass, which I love. And also some smaller bushes, some small um, like flowers and I think it looks so so cool and beautiful by the end. Uh, you guys of course will be able to see it better in the cinematics by the end of the video. So this entire habitat is inspired by one of the habitats from the Berlin Zoo that I saw and I really loved. It was the Gamsbok and the Gravy Zebra uh, habitat uh, in that zoo. Uh, so the Gamsbok is also an oryx, so I thought it makes sense to build something similar for the scimitar horned oryx. The thing that I loved the most about this habitat was the shelter and right now you guys can see me uh, starting to build it. When I was in that zoo and I saw that shelter I thought immediately to myself that it will be so so cool to build something like this in Planet Zoo. I actually thought that it will be easier to build. <laughs> I struggled with that a lot and this is basically also why this video was sort of delayed because I that I had like four attempts to build this shelter it was so hard uh, firstly I've built it too small then I didn't like the pieces that I used and so on and so on but finally you can see me building it for the last time the last attempt and I really liked what I was able to achieve. So as I told you guys so many times, I want to have like an African area in our Elm Hill City Zoo for uh, some of the African animals that we have in the game. For example, zebras, giraffes, uh, probably hyenas and uh, some antelopes and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, the scimitar horned oryx will be the first animal, like the introduction to this area. Uh, we will go back to building this area on the later stage, probably in some future, but but I wanted to add the oryx right now because it was just added to the game and I couldn't wait to build for it. So what I had in my head for this like African area of the zoo uh, was that we'll do it a bit like themed, uh, like still looking like a city zoo nothing crazy but it will have like this cool theming that you know you'll know right away that you are in an African uh, part of the zoo like an African section but I actually didn't want to go for thatch roofs and mud walls because we are doing something like this in my other zoo the desert adventure park so I wanted to build something different in here and seeing that shelter in Berlin Zoo like it right away clicked and I knew that what I wanted to build. Also, I didn't have a chance uh, to play too much with those plaster pieces added uh, to the game with the uh, Africa pack. I thought that they were so, so cool, but I really didn't use them too much. So, so the theme that we'll go for in this African section is this like North African architecture. So a lot of bright colors, a lot of plaster pieces, a lot of colorful tiles and in general a lot of uh, pieces from the Africa pack. So today's shelter sort of shows you what you can expect in the future when I will start building for those African animals in this zoo. I will right now show you guys the photo that I took in the Berlin Zoo of the shelter so you know how, what you can expect, what I am going for and what I had in my mind while building this building. It basically has like two parts, one is round, 
with this like small detailed ornamental tower and the second one is just you know straight with some entrances to the stalls where the animals can spend the night. The original building has like a very dark thatch roof, uh, but unfortunately we are not able to change the color of the thatch pieces. Uh, that's why I decided to go for something else because I thought that, you know, the very like uh, bright colors won't fit that building. It will be so, so bright with the white walls and so on. Uh, that's why I decided to go for some wood and in the end I love how this roof is looking. I used like a wooden piece from the arctic pack. I really like the texture of the arctic uh, wood pieces uh, and I think it works so so good with that building. Right now you can see me starting to build this like tower it took so much time because uh it was like very detailed it had a lot of decorations uh, different pieces that i had to use but in the end i really love it i think it like makes this entire shelter look so good i will also use some tiles to make this like ornamental like thing around it and i think it looks so beautiful with it in the end i am very happy with that shelter i think it came out so so well it was a lot of work it really surprised me uh, because i thought it would be easier to build uh, i didn't show you guys building the interior because this video is already a bit too long uh, this shelter took a lot of time to build but you will see the interior on the cinematic shots by the end of this video. Uh, I used the stalls that I created last time for the Pszewalski horses. So if you would like to see it, if you haven't seen that video, I will put the link down in the description and on the screen. And also, a little surprise for you guys. This shelter will be available to download from the Steam Workshop. The link will be down in the description, so if you would like to use it in your Zeus, you are welcome to do so. I am sure it will be suitable for different animals, not only the scimitar horned oryx, so if you'd like to use it for different animals, I can see for example zebras or different antelopes or I don't know, any animal that you like. So yeah, I'm happy to pass it on, so download it and use it in your own Zeus. Okay, but now let's talk a bit about the scimitar horned oryx. As I I told you guys at the beginning of this video this animal was very high on my wish list and I think it is really really well done in the game. I love the colors, I love the fur texture, I love basically how it looks. I think it looks really realistic. So I am very very happy with this animal. I've seen it in a lot of zoos and actually as I told you guys I have sort of like a personal story connected with it. I normally don't share too much of my private life and, you know, private things in here in those videos because I think you came here to see me build from animals from Planet Zoo, not to hear about my life. This is probably not interesting for you at all. But I just wanted to tell you that if it wasn't for the scimitar horned oryx, I wouldn't probably start my channel. I wouldn't be so into Zeus and yeah, I wouldn't be Caesar Creates. So as a child, I always been into animals but I was more into like pets, dogs and stuff like that, little cute animals uh, that most of children like. Uh, I wasn't really into more exotic animals or zoos or anything like that. But one event has changed that completely. I remember when I was like eight or nine or something like that. It was a beginning of the primary school. So I was already able to read actually. And my father used to read a lot of newspapers, local newspapers and so on. And I remember like seeing this article in one of those newspapers that there was a huge event in our local zoo because a scimitar horned orange was born and it was like shortly uh, after the uh, the official like statement that they are extinct in the wild so it was sort of like a huge event because this small little antelope was meant to you know help to rebuild the population of uh, those antelopes 
In this article, there was information, of course, about the birth of this new uh, small oryx, uh, about the extinction of the oryx in the wild, but also about the role of the zoos with, you know, helping with conservation, uh, with, uh, you know, breeding the extinct st species and bringing ba them back to the wild. And it sort of like opened my eyes. I remember I had this like moment of realization as a child because uh, because before that I had this like image of the zoo in my head of the place where you go for a walk, where you spend your weekend with a family, where the parents take their kids to show them how the elephants look or how the lion looks and so on. For me, it was just like an entertainment entertainment thing, nothing more. And this article really like opened my eyes that the zoos are so much more than that. And I thought that it was so, so cool that they are actually saving those species in need, that, uh, you know, they are helping and also that there are animals on our planet that are going extinct. I didn't know that when I was eight. Uh, so, uh, yeah, there was a lot of realization after reading this and I got really into that. I got really into animals, their issues. I was reading a lot of books about it as a child. So, uh, yeah, this was all because of the scimitar horned oryx and an article in a newspaper. But also there was another thing. Uh, after seeing that, my grandfather, who uh, used to take care of me, uh, when I was a child because my parents were working a lot so he used to pick me up from school uh, he used to do homework with me he uh, used to you know take me to different places so we were spending a lot of time together and he was actually a person who noticed this new uh, like interest of mine who uh, saw how much I love animals and how much I care about them so he started to take me to our local zoo a lot uh, we we went there uh, I think like four times a year like at least maybe five uh, we went there every time there was like a new animal introduced to the zoo where the new habitat was opened uh, where something was you know renovated or when there was a birth of uh, certain animals he always wanted to take me there because he knew how excited I will be uh, so I spent a lot of time in my local zoo with him and every time, like really every single time that we went to the zoo, I had to visit the scimitar horned oryx enclosure because I just had to go and see if there are new babies in there that will help uh, to save the species because I thought that those antelopes are so beautiful and we always used to spend a lot of time by their enclosure. So yeah, I had like very uh, beautiful memories connected to these animals with my grandfather who always used to sneak in some apples and carrots to give to some antelopes to give for example to the oryxes or some goats and so on don't do it don't do it please the guests are not supposed to feed the animals but but my grandfather saw how much joy it's like gives me so he always used to you know bring some apples and some carrots and we used to feed those animals when no one was watching. So yeah, whenever I see uh, this animal, the oryx, I am always smiling a bit because a lot of childhood memories uh, come to my mind. Unfortunately, my grandpa passed away just one month after I started this channel because of COVID. I'm sure he would love my videos because he was always super supportive, like he was always super behind everything that I did in my life. Back then my channel was sort of like my little secret so no one in my family knew about it. Now everyone knows and they are also super like happy for me and supportive. I actually wish that he saw those videos because I think that he would love them uh, and I would be able to tell him that because of him helping me to develop my 
interest as a child, I was able to start something as cool as this YouTube channel. That brings me so much joy and fulfillment. And because all of that, I would like to dedicate this video to my grandpa, because without him, uh, there wouldn't be Caesar Creates for sure. So now you guys see why the Scimitar Horned Oryx is so important to me and why I was so happy that it was finally added to Planet Zoo. Unfortunately, I haven't seen too many people build for them, at least here on YouTube. I don't know why, maybe they're not as exciting as, for example, Amor Leopard or Przewalski Horse, uh, but still, I think that they are really cool animals. I am always up for any ungulates that are added to Planet Zoo because I, as I always tell you guys, I think like those animals are just the staple zoo animals. In every zoo they are, there are a lot of ungulates, so uh, I love to have my variation in there, uh, in them. And the scimitar horned oryx uh, is something that I saw in many zoos that I've been to, so finally it is now in the game. But yeah, not many content creators decided to build for them. I'm sure that Leaf did a very nice, like, beautiful habitat for those guys. So if you haven't seen that video, definitely go and check Leaf's channel out because he is just amazing at building in Planet Zoo. But if you've been waiting for another Scimitar Horned Oryx habitat to be added to YouTube, here I am and I hope you guys will enjoy this video. So, as you guys can see, I am still working on this shelter. It took so much time, I really wanted to make it look nice, really detailed. Uh, so yeah, there are a lot of different things that I had to think about. For example, those metal guards that you could see me like adding to those plaster walls. I mean, you need to have something like that in case of rain, uh, because if the rain was like pouring over the walls, I mean on the top parts of them, they will easily get you know destroyed by the water. Uh, so you have to have something like waterproof uh, added uh, and. Of course, I took it from the original build, uh, and I think that it looks really cool, really realistic. Uh, so those are those little things that I was adding to this uh, building to make it look even more detailed, even more nice. But in the end, this has to be one of my favorite shelters that I have ever done in this game. Uh, it is a bit small, I would say, like it is perfect for those animals, I think, uh, but for some it can be too small. Uh, if you guys will be adding them for example for rhinos that will be totally too small but for some other small ungulates I'm sure it will be perfect so as you guys can see I am now adding the flooring around the shelter this was the first time that I was actually using the rustic wall uh, from the euro pack uh, as the floor and I think it looks so so beyond good I'll be using it a lot more in the future uh, because I just love the way it looks later on in the video I will sort of blend this floor with uh, the terrain around it uh, we're using some uh, decals so it will look even better as you guys can see uh, the whole building is basically white uh, white is very very difficult to keep clean when it comes to animals and you know them being a bit dirty not caring about things being clean around them uh, so uh, I will also add a lot of decals to the building itself to make it look a bit more like dirty uh, and also as you guys can see the whole building has like this uh, section like on the lower part uh, of you know some sort of bricks or tiles in a lower section of the entire building so it won't get so dirty from for example rain water uh, and stuff like that uh, I really like this detail I think it helps to bring this building a bit more to life uh, also I will add a lot of things like a water trough with uh, like a tap of water coming from 
from coming out from the wall and also I will add my own custom feeders uh, to this uh, building. This was totally inspired by uh, real builds. Uh, the feeders are my creations, they weren't like inspired by anything uh, but in the end I think that adding those details really helped to bring this whole building to life. Thanks to that it looks so so realistic and I just love it and as I told you guys this is probably my favorite shelter that I did ever on the channel. Uh, I mean definitely the outside part when it comes to the inside I think I prefer the Pshavalski horse uh, like inside part of the shelter a bit more because I had more space uh, you know to build in here it was a bit you know squeezed in and as I told you guys before uh, of course you will be able to see this shelter inside in the cinematics by the end of this video and also if you will download this shelter from the workshop of course you will be able to uh, see it all in detail. When it comes to the plans for Planet Zoo videos because you guys are asking me a lot about those. Uh, so we did the Pshavalski horse habitat, we did the scimitar horned oryx habitat right now and in the next episode we'll add the armor leopard to the wild cat house and after that I will continue my work on this house to finish it off finally uh, so we'll be adding a lot of bigger cats uh, to our zoo finally f like some of your favorites will be there uh, and also I will be back with the desert adventure park after I will build for the armor leopards I already know what animals I will build for next in that park so uh, they are pretty exciting and I cannot wait because you guys still haven't uh, got the chance to see me build for those uh, so yeah this is what you can expect of course I'll be also back soon with another uh, Jurassic World Evolution 2 video if you are also watching those so yeah I will try to go back to my regular schedule of the videos but you know it's summer so uh, there are some unexpected meetings some unexpected for example walks or uh, I don't know some weekend getaways so that's why the schedule is sometimes not too perfect but as I told you guys a couple of videos ago uh, I will try not to stick to the schedule so, so much not to get stressed about you know having to upload the videos on certain days uh, I just prefer to do it in my time and I think it's so much better for me personally and I no, I didn't see uh, you guys complaining about it so I think we are like all fine with that so uh, yeah some more videos are coming but we'll see what will happen in the future also there are some very exciting times when it comes to the Jurassic World Evolution 2 on my channel because uh, in the next video I will actually be adding the last large enclosure to this park and then the whole park will be finished I will do some you know finishing touches and then I will give you guys a final tour of a finished project here on my channel like finally I will have a project that I will actually finish <laughs> so uh, I cannot wait for it I cannot wait to show you guys around this park because I love it I am so proud of this park and I I am so 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 beyond happy with how it has turned out Okay, but coming back to the video, as you guys can see, we are basically done with the shelter. The outside part is done, I already did the inside off camera and now we'll be uh, finally uh, working on an outside part of this habitat. So firstly, we are creating some custom uh, fences for this habitat and for the holding pen that we'll also add in here. Uh, this is also inspired by uh, the habitat that the shelter is from from the Berlin Zoo uh, of course I had to adjust it for the game uh, you, you are not able to you know recreate everything in that game because sometimes you just don't have the certain pieces so it is a bit bigger than in the original uh, like uh, habitat but I still really really like it I use here some uh, plaster pieces and also uh, those painted bricks 
and some of the limestone pieces. I of course colored them all in gray tones and white tones, uh, so it looks a bit more uh, like suitable for our building. Uh, and uh, I also added those locks, like from the beams from the Africa pack. And I added this like really cool small detail uh, using the gutter holders from the uh, conservation pack. I basically used that for the lock holders uh, and I think it looks so 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 good and realistic. I saw this like technique of at uh, you know attaching the locks to fences in so many like I don't know stables like farms uh, like uh, zoos of course so I am so uh, happy that we finally have like this small piece that I'll be able to use in that way so this is the fence that I'll be using on one side of the habitat and on the other side I will be using the fence that I really loved and also some of you loved <laughs> because I saw it in the comments uh, that I uh, built, I've built for the Pszewalski horse last time. Uh, I of course adjusted it a bit for this habitat. I made it a bit lower because those antelopes are uh, not as tall. I'm sure that they don't need such, you know, tall fences. Uh, so yeah, I also really, really like uh, how this uh, fence is looking because it will be positioned in this more like lush and dense uh, part of the habitat so it really blends well with the foliage and you just cannot like see it very well and this is what I love uh, you know I love blending the fences inside of the foliage so they are not like so visible for the guests. I also created some uh, custom gates that allow uh, the keepers to close animals, for example, in a holding pen or move them in and out of the enclosure. Uh, so I used the logs again and I really, really like how they are looking. Also something that I took from the Berlin Zoo. So as you guys can see a lot of custom things in this video that's why it probably took so much time. Uh, there are a lot of those small things that really take a lot of time but I think that they make uh, our builds look a bit more like realistic, a bit more like detailed, a little bit more fun but also uh, slow our computers down <laughs> so that's the issue. I actually think about uh, you know upgrading my computer by the end of the year I am sort of starting to save money for that because I can see uh, it's starting to perform really bad, especially in the Elm Hill City Zoo, uh, because there are basically so many small pieces in that zoo. Uh, but you know, I am still able to build like without any problems. But the thing that is getting a bit problematic are the cinematic shots. Uh, they are a bit laggy sometimes, and I don't want that I want them to be smooth in my videos so uh, I will probably uh, try to upgrade my computer by the end of this year I'm so hopeful that I will be able to save enough money because you guys know that those things are expensive Okay guys, so as you can see, I added some trees to this habitat. I decided to uh, place more trees on one side of it uh, to make this like more like dense, small forest for the animals uh, on one side of the habitat so that they can, for example, rest from the sun. Uh, they can, you know, uh, graze on the grass in there because I'm sure that grass will be growing better in the shadow, not in the full uh, sun. And I also added one uh, of those European trees, I think it is oak tree or something, uh, on the other side of the habitats for it not to look so like uh, empty. And I really like this one single individual tree, I think it looks so so good. And of course I added my tree guards, my favorite ones made from the barriers. I think that they are so generic and look so nice now that we have the option to make those, uh, you know, mesh, uh, steel mesh barriers curved, uh, they are looking so so good and I will be using that a lot in the future. Also one tree will have the guards made from the rubbing post, the enrichment items, so the animals will be able to use it and it will serve as the tree guard, so really cool idea. 
that I've been using for quite some time. Uh, I also forgot to mention about the decals that I added to the roof. Uh, this was also something that I took from the original building and I think it makes the whole roof look so, so much better. Uh, you can just imagine that there are, you know, just some dead leaves, uh, some moss growing there or just some dirt laying on this uh, roof and it makes it look so, so much realistic. I really, really love it. I also added some dead trees to this habitat. There are always a lot of those in uh, ungulate enclosures, I feel like, because they can graze on them. Uh, they give those animals some, you know, places to hide behind, to lay there. Uh, and uh, it was also in this Gamsbok and Gravy Zebra enclosure that I am basing this habitat on. Uh, I think it looks so cool, especially that I was going for a bit more like a deserty vibe building this habitat you have like those uh, dead logs and trees uh, on those deserts and uh, I think it looks so so cool uh, when it comes to the foliage I will add more of those you know more dry uh, grasses in here I won't show you everything but uh, I will uh, add a lot of small rocks of course and then I will fill the spaces with dry grass patches and I will add more like green uh, foliage in, like around the trees in this like more dense section on the other side because there will be some shadows uh, so this is what I had in my mind uh, also I won't include all the footage of adding the grass and the foliage to this habitat I am sure you guys will be able to figure out how I did it, did it but because it was a lot of work and this video will be even longer it is already more than 40 minutes when I look at this speed build uh, so yeah this was a lot of time to build especially the shelter of course because it is so highly detailed okay I think it is time to give you guys some fun facts about the scimitar horned oryx so this animal was once widespread across North Africa but in but in the year 2000 it was declared extinct in the wild by the IUCN red list. They used to form herds up to 70 individuals, they inhibited semi-deserts and deserts and were very well adapted to live in extreme heat with their efficient cooling system and very low requirement of water. The scimitar oryx was actually domesticated in ancient Egypt and it is believed to have been used as food and sacrificed as offerings to gods. Wealthy people in ancient Rome also bred them. Uh, the use of their valuable hides began in Middle Ages. Uh, the unicorn myth might have originated from sightings of scimitar oryx with a broken horn. Both male and female oryxes have horns, uh, with females being more slender, the horns are long, thin and symmetrical and curve backwards. They can reach up to 1.2 meters and the hollow walls of the horns are thin so that they can easily break. I remember that in my local zoo there was one oryx with only one horn so probably he had some fight or something else happened. The decline of the population of the scimitar oryx began as the result of climate change during the Neolithic period and later it was hunted extensively for its horns. Today it is bred in captivity in special reserves in Tunisia, Morocco and Senegal and on private exotic animal ranches in the Texas Hill Country. In 2016 the reintroduction program has been launched and currently a small herd has been successfully re reintroduced to Chad. The first group that was released there was made of 21 animals which by the beginning of 2017 had already produced a calf. Uh, this was the first birth in the wild uh, of this species uh, for more than 20 years. 
The ICUN has said that they believe there are no more than 1,800 existing scimitar horned oryx left in the world, which is so, so beyond sad. And I am so hopeful that we will be able to save this species and introduce it back to the wild because this is such a beautiful animal and I cannot like imagine it not being there anymore. I often get those comments under my videos that zoos are bad because they keep the animals in small cages and this is not natural for animals and why I am playing a game like this. Uh, but this is just one part of the zoos as I told you guys before. Uh, the other part is saving the extinct, the endangered species, breeding them, releasing them to the wild. So you guys who don't understand what the zoos are also about, please read more about this uh, and think about it before you jump to certain conclusions. Okay guys, so as you could see, I basically finished the foliage, finished adding rocks and details to the habitat. I also showed you uh, adding the invisible barrier around this because I also got so many questions last time how I did the fence because some of you don't use the invisible barriers and don't know about them. So uh, I wanted to show you how you can do it. And right now I am working on the ditch, I mean the moat, adding so many details to it I think that in the end it looks perfect just how I want it I added a lot of mulch pieces I also added uh, a lot of uh, different uh, you know grasses and it looks like a bit overgrown with time and I really love that vibe okay guys this is all that I have for you today I hope you have enjoyed our video I hope you like this habitat as much as I do if you like this video please consider to uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already this would really mean a world to me and will help my channel Channel to grow. Uh, also, ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and of course, comment down below. If you like this habitat, what are your thoughts about the scimitar horned oryx? I would love to hear them. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.